All right, now we're just finishing up putting on our clear gel and white, which I just mixed up right there, only on the sky area. As you can see, I've got a nice little sketch of our mountain and valley painting. Of course, if you're looking forward to seeing me do this painting and you'd like to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. All right, now let's grab that same one inch brush to wipe it out. In fact, you know, one thing I don't really show, once, I, uh, once I'm done with my clear gel, I like to scoop it away because you know, then it just gets into the rest of your paint and makes a big mess. You don't want to thin your paint down except for in the sky. All right, with all that out of the way, I'm going to just warm up this, the bottom of the sky, just barely warm it up. I don't want to paint a sunset. I just don't want my sky completely blue today. It needs to have that warmth in it. Well, it doesn't need to, but I want it to. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Not too much of that. Not too much right along the mountain. And then uh, that's really about it. And we'll put the blue at the top. So now I've got kind of a, well, it's blue, but it's got a little red in it. It's not really a purple. So it's as blue as a little red, just to, just to kind of keep it somewhat, somewhat warm. We'll just place that in, blend down that clear gel. Let's see if you're new to painting here, you'll see exactly why we use that clear gel. It uh, just makes life so easy. You could use the two inch brush. This one inch brush is a little small for this, but it was in my hand, you know, so that's just the way it goes. I like that. That works. We'll leave just a little, uh, little room for clouds. Not that you have to really leave any room, but we're going to have some clouds there. Should be very pretty. Those clouds will be a nice backdrop for our mountain. Now I'm going to use the one inch brush to place in the dark of some clouds up here. You can see it's just a simple gray color that's mixed up. Not a whole lot going on. And it's also fairly light because, you know, when you're doing a painting that's this vast, you know, you're seeing this many miles away, it's so important to know, you know, that you got to have these light, pale colors. And, and I'm even going to transfer that into the clouds. I want these clouds light and pale, but the mountain's certainly going to be light and pale. And then the background area, too. Nothing vibrant because those pale colors will cause it to recede into the distance and it will you get a nice painting filled with depth. It really works. But anyway, that was kind of a long explanation. But look at this. Uh, look at this little cloud that happened while we were <laughs> while we were just there talking. That's pretty cool. If you guys need help with clouds, I've got a couple of DVD or download lessons that are available on the website so that you can learn clouds and practice clouds techniques. that are so important to learn. You know, it's tough to get out here and do a painting without the basic skill set, because uh, then you're kind of just fighting it the whole time. It's easier to go ahead and learn what you're doing, learn how to paint a cloud, and then go paint a landscape with a bunch of clouds in it. There we go. So now I've got a little bit of uh, a little bit of white tinted with red, not pink, white tinted with red, and there's a big difference. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and we got to think about where I guess our highlights coming across like this today. It doesn't really matter, but it does once you start. <laughs> it doesn't matter until you do something like this. And then once you do it, you got to stick with it. You know, that works. Wow, that's pretty. Let's try that again right up here. Get a little more. Just simple clouds, but I think it's I think it's fun. You can enjoy the simple clouds and enjoy these simple things as you're painting them. It's nothing. It's certainly nothing intense. It's just a little rolling cloud. Just fun. It's just fun. All right, there you go. I'm kind of going not too fast because I don't have very many to do. So I might as well take my time on the on the one or two clouds that we do have. Might as well. There we go. Not too not too crazy today. You see that? It's fairly subdued. And I like that. I think that totally works. But of course, on yours, you can uh, you can do a little more, uh, a little more exciting clouds if you like. Speaking of your version, we should take a look at the paintings that you guys did in my last one. And if you're not already doing it, definitely share your version of what well, would be this painting using the hashtag on the screen. And if you do it in time, I'll be able to grab it there and stick it into the next painting video. And it's always fun to see them. It's fun for everybody else to get to see your painting. Pretty much just just layering these little cloud highlights on in a way that's fairly natural, not not drawing too much attention to them. And less and less, maybe as you go out to the edges, I want to try to draw your eye to the middle of this painting. The only way you're going to do that is just by kind of leaving the edges a little more soft. In fact, maybe we'll do that with the mountain. We should do that with the mountain. I'm getting excited. I have not done a mountain in a long time. At least it feels like it's been a long time. 
I'm excited for it. So I'm gonna try to maybe leave the edges of the background kind of misty. It'd be cool. We'll see how <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts. You know me. I'll say, oh, we're gonna do one thing, and then the next the next time you see me painting, I'm completely changing it. But at least it's a good start. <laughs> Does anybody else get nervous when you add a, a yellow, <laughs> see that a yellow ochre and white accent highlight over your blue area? It's enough to make you nervous. <laughs> oh, there's a way too much blue in the sky to be doing this, but I think it needs it, so I'm doing it. The trick to, the trick to not getting green here is to hit it once, one time. If you hit it any more than that, you will automatically get green. It's just gonna mix with the blue that's underneath. I mean, there's just too much blue in the sky to be, to be touching this more than once. Also, you should definitely be wiping off your brush frequently. And the other thing is I wouldn't overdo, I just kind of do it here in the middle. We're trying to Draw a little extra interest. And otherwise, don't do it. You know, just do it in the middle. There, see that? Just starting to catch a little of that sunlight. I think that really works. It's a, it's a silver lining uh, or just a kind of a glow on the outside of the cloud. That's all it is. Nice. Now, you can add a few more layers if you want to, you know, but just don't be going over those areas again. See that? I'll just put in that layer, and then again, oops, another layer maybe right there. So now we're going to go ahead and shape our mountain, and of course we, we lost our sketch. But it was, it was good to sketch it, because at least I, I got to kind of practice it and kind of figure out where I want it. And you know, I, I think it just helps the painting go better. So yeah, we always cover our sketches, but I just feel like it helps anyway. Ooh, that's nice. You see that color? I'm using a very specific color here. Very, very very light gray, like a blue gray. But the point is it's very light. Oh, it barely stands out from the background. And that means it's perfect for this. Because the last thing in the world we want is to have the foreground or the background come too, too quick up to the foreground, if that makes sense. The only way you're gonna create depth in this painting is through color, color and value, two ways. Fill that in. There's no, uh, there's no medium here under these mountains. These are dry, so it does make, it does make highlighting easier when we go to do that. Excellent, look at that. But it also does create a little bit more work for ourselves, you know, when it comes to scrubbing it in. You're gonna have to make sure you fill in all those canvas holes. They will not want to cooperate <laughs> just because the canvas is so dry. But oh, it's worth it, it is worth it later, big time. Mm, that works. Okay, as we come down, I've got a, a slightly, a slightly more, well, it's just kind of a, almost a greenish gray mixed up. You may be wondering, well, where did that come from? I messed up. <laughs> that's where it came from. So sometimes you have to just stop and restart your color mix, and that's okay. That is absolutely okay. Save them, though. Sometimes you can use them, like, for instance, right now, using it just to create a little more, uh, a little more of a darker gray coming forward. It's subtle. Absolutely, it's subtle. But I like having two grays instead of one. And like I said, there's almost a feeling of green in this one. It's hard to tell until you put it up against, you know, uh, uh, the other gray. In fact, this may... Okay, so it's really hard to see, but I can see it here in person. I'm not sure if you even with these good cameras if you're going to be able to see it or not. But just trust me, it's slightly different. <laughs> There we go. All right, what do you think right here? Let's go with a little more of our, maybe some, some red into this. Now red is a foreground color. Add red in your mix and it helps, and it helps to pull you forward a bit. So there you go. That is exactly what we're gonna do. I'm leaving a little blank spot there and I'll show you why later. So this is why we left these blank areas. It's for the snow. And that totally, Makes it easier. It makes it so much easier to have a little bit of that, a little bit of that dry canvas still to work with, so that you're not covering your wet, light gray. I was going to say dark gray because it kind of is dark, but our wet light gray <laughs> with a lighter snow color. It would just be. It would be slightly more. It would be significantly more challenging. It's always easier if you've got just no paint. Paint on the canvas is your worst enemy. It really is. So limit the amount of paint. 
that will make uh, it will make everything easy because you know oil paint is really it's super forgiving it's easy to use but the one thing everybody complains about is mud and I understand <laughs> let's face it I've done my fair share of complaining about mud too but this is this is the way you avoid it is by is by keeping a very close eye on how much paint layers you have down underneath. That works. That totally works. Now a little bit up in here as well. There you go. That is the basic idea and that's all it is. It's very basic, but it works. Basic, but it works. Down in here, a little snow, but also I want some grass or not necessarily just grass, but trees and whatnot growing up the slopes of this mountain. This is the closer mountain. Excellent. Maybe wipe that off. You can always go back. You hey, here's some of our original gray. You can go back in here and 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 bring in some more mountain shapes over that over that snow if you like. It just completely depends on what you need to have happening in your landscape. That's pretty much what I wanted right there, though. It's looking it's looking kind of like I was hoping it would. And that alone, <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. That is definitely a good thing. So now I'm going to highlight just some of the rocks of the mountain with the three quarter brush. And honestly, you know, when painting mountains, this isn't always true, but this is true a lot of the times with these further away mountains. It's more important what you don't paint, you know, than what you do paint. So in other words, you want to hold yourself back and don't overdo because you will potentially very quickly make a mess of, you know, of the dark areas. It'll become way too like vibrant and way too much going on and it'll just look like a mess. <laughs> if that makes any sense. But by doing just a few touches of of a very pale, very pale, look at that thing. That didn't even look like brown until you put it on the canvas and it kind of does look like brown. But that's that's the idea. Can we do a little on this one back here? Maybe but not much. Yeah, that's about it. That's, that's definitely about it. it. Looks pretty good though. Think about the way the light's gonna hit your mountain. You know, you don't want it everywhere. You want it just on those, on those cliff faces that are gonna catch the light. Think about where your shadows are gonna land. That's all important stuff to be considering when you're doing this sort of thing. Excellent. That looks good. Ooh, it's subtle, but <laughs> that's why it looks good because it's subtle. There. Mm -hmm. I think that works. There. All right. Now you can maybe do do a little on this one here if you want to. I think I want to. Just a little. Not much. Wow. It is so subtle. It is so incredibly subtle. Hmm. That that's just it's so exciting. I like subtle. Subtle is harder to paint. I, I say that every time I do something like this, but it's, it's harder to paint subtly. It's very easy to paint bold. It's that kind of that holding back and just the tiniest. I mean, just a, a little drop of paint will change your color drastically. You know, it's harder to mix subtle, but it's definitely rewarding and a fun challenge. So now I've got just a couple of different greens mixed up here, but look, each one was mixed over an old pile. And I really can't stress <laughs> how important that is. Mix paint on top of paint, you get a more professional look. It helps to tie your entire painting together with color. Very important, don't skip that. But anyway, maybe I'll get a little more yellow ochre and go right over here to wherever that pile was. There we go. And we want, you know, just different stripes of, of yellow colors. Almost too vibrant though. That's almost too vibrant. But rather than removing it, let's take some white. Uh, and I wiped out the brush, but watch this. Just go right into that. And that works. So that create nice, uh, wow, I like that. You get little shadows and highlights automatically. Just create a nice little valley back here. I imagine that this is, uh, you know, farmland or something down here, it's just flat. You can add any kind of details back here, but don't keep it limited because it's very, 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 very far away. <laughs> so let's work on maybe a couple of evergreens up here. Actually, tell you what, I'm not super happy with that. 
Let's grab a let's grab a shop towel. This is too it's it's mixing too much. You see that? See how you know one or two strokes and then it, it becomes almost like a mid-tone. That's that's not good. <laughs> it is not good at all. We're gonna get that paint off. So this is the secret to oil painting all in one day successfully is wiping off your canvas when you need to. Because after, you know, yeah, I probably could have painted an evergreen right there. But once I had it on, I don't think it was gonna highlight very successfully because it would just be creating mud. So I'm gonna get all of the paint off right here where I think I'm gonna have my tree. Let me uh, just set that one to the side. You can wipe your brushes on those. You don't have to actually throw them away. I'm gonna go ahead and just, just take care of where I think I'm gonna have some more trees. Yeah, I got, you know, uh, I'm gonna have some up in there. I don't wanna destroy my clouds. So I'm just gonna take off a little bit more of this paint here toward the bottom. Just makes things that much safer. All right, that works. That should be enough. The main, the main area here, was really my concern. Okay, oh, so much better. Look, it just stays almost black. And that's what, that lets you know you did it right. Otherwise, otherwise, what a mess. There we go. I don't care about that. The whatever the little blurry bits showing through. It looks like more tree. Looks like more tree. There. So at least it's got a dark, a dark middle area, and it's okay if it mixes a little with your background as it goes out. It's not as important, but it, but you've got to have a dark center to your trees. Oh, it makes all the difference in the world. So there you go. That's nice. That's kind of a big tree to, to really help hold in uh, the viewer's eye from the from flying off that side. And we've got the mountains kind of on this. I like that. I think it balances out pretty well. Maybe bring just a few limbs in. It looks like a little evergreen hanging in from the side here. Not too much. Just, just a few limbs is probably about all you need to indicate that. And then down here, it's just solid because we have a rock. So I'm gonna be fairly accurate with my sketch today. You know, I'm not gonna go crazy uh, past what I did. I wanna try to stay in the lines for once. <laughs> Let's see how that works. But there you go. You may be, uh, you may be noticing. Well, there's really, this is really sloppy or, you know, there's really nothing to it. Well, that's true. It is. It kind of starts sloppy. And then you bring the detail out from there. You don't have to paint evergreens that way, but you can. Just do however you need to do. So now I'm going to get some limbs here on these more detailed trees. As you see, I went ahead and did the trunks before the actual limbs. And that, that way we can do less limbs, which I, I like. Maybe do a couple more big thick ones and then a few more sparse ones and that way our painting will have some amount of variety because of that so it's well worth doing here's my color pretty much out of sap green but i've got a lot of umber in it a little yellow ochre there that totally is what we needed and a lot of these can be kind of left sparse you could even say blank that is completely okay Kind of just however you need to do it. I think the negative space is good. You see, I don't want to, it would be really sad to take this variety of tree up here and put it down here because, oh, yeah, I would cover up all our mountains. It would be so sad. Oh, we worked much too hard on our mountains for that. Don't even want to think about that. So we will be very sparing with our leaves. Less is more approach when it comes to this. Otherwise... You wish, you wish that you hadn't done that. You have to go back and paint your mountain in, which I mean, I probably have done before. I'm, I'm sure that's something that I've, I've done in the past, and I'm sure it's something you could fix. But it takes time. I'd rather not deal with it right now. I'd rather just do it the first time correctly. There you go. But you know, it doesn't always work out that way, does it? Now it's time for the rocks. I'd say, I'd say it's been long enough. This is the last blank area. It's time to get that filled in. Sometimes it's so much easier to, to see what you're doing once you get these blank areas filled in. Excellent. Now, when you paint these in, just like anything else, don't paint them flat. Change your color every time you reload, if that's, you know, if that's what you want to do. But certainly change your color often because that will make for a much easier experience when it goes to highlighting. The highlights will just... They'll happen so much more effortlessly if you're able to just build some variety in. Okay, excellent. <laughs> kind of kind of exciting, isn't it? Right here, maybe. Kind of, again, following my sketch, you know. It's, 
pretty much following my layout. I, I see here, this is a cliff face. This is where it drops off. Yep. And these are just, honestly, this is supposed to be, you know, the shadow tone. This is fairly light, but I, I like that. I think that works. And then we'll put, so this is the shadow tone for the highlight side. We'll put the shadow tone for the shadow side in in a minute. And then that, you know, that's it. Then we'll highlight on top. Again, it just kind of goes to making things more simple and, and a little more effective, a little easier, especially if you don't paint a whole lot. It's easier to go ahead and start, you know, set yourself up for success. That's what I'm trying to say. Set yourself up for success. Nice. Well, now that my rocks are in, I'm gonna scrape them off, <laughs> hopefully without damaging them too much, but there's just, you know, too much thick paint, gotta get it off. Just scraping it with a palette knife seems to be a pretty quick and easy way to do it. But you you notice the, uh, the actual values and colors, they stay. So this is good. This will allow me, if you're, if you're curious why I'm doing this, this will allow me to, to highlight my rocks in a way that's more controlled and less muddy. That's all. There you go. Yeah, perfect. That is all we need. Perhaps you can, you know, you can use a, a shop towel and just get off a little bit more if you need to. Probably not even fully necessary. Or maybe just kind of use it to fill in some of those scratch marks. You don't want to, you don't want to have rocks where you can see the canvas showing through. So get rid of those scratch marks. But other than that, that is about right. All right, well, just didn't, didn't want to skip over that. It's an important thing. You know, you might just jump into highlights. Ah, let's do highlights, but you got to do that first if there's too much paint. Oh, speaking of too much paint, I need some more paint. I need some more white. I'll get it in a second. <laughs> let's just take, uh, let's take some sort of a very pale gray. And I've kind of got that warm underneath, but I'm going to do kind of a pale gray, I think, for my for my rocks, I think they'll be pretty. And that kind of helps to tie in with some of these colors, see pale colors, and it'll just be nice. Of course, pale colors recede and, and warm colors come forward, but I just don't think it's gonna hurt to have a little variety in here. I think it'll look good. So. All right, uh, as far as that, maybe, yeah, there. I don't know, you just kind of do whatever seems like it might work. Now I'm gonna use the fan brush and quite a lot of paint actually. So quite a lot of a, just a light yellow, loosely mixed, not, not over mixed. And I'm just touching it right on the edges of these branches. There is more paint than brush here. And that's the reason why this works. Without that, this isn't going to, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna come off the brush. What's gonna end up happening is your dark is gonna come off the canvas and onto the brush. And that's not the direction we wanna go. It's the wrong way. <laughs> Uh, yes, so that's the way you that's the way you go the direction you want to go. Put a lot of paint down, and then it just sort of works. By keeping one side of the brush clean, you can kind of feather in some of the the light color. If you get in a little too thick there, you just feather it, and you probably will end up putting some areas on too thick or thicker than you wish you had, just because you're doing it with so much paint. See that? But you put it on thick like that, and then you just touch the edges with that with the dry brush part. Where there's no paint on that side. See, it just feathers it right in. It's kind of cool. It's a little different than, than the way I usually paint evergreens, but I just thought it'd be fun to try it because I do like to try stuff like that from time to time, just random stuff. Just completely random and weird things. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. That one there didn't work. <laughs> I don't like that tree. I'll have to come back and I'll mess with this. I'm, I'm planning to come back with the detail brush and just clean up areas, anything that doesn't look quite right. But sometimes the detail brush is just so slow that I know not everybody enjoys using it all the time. So I'm trying to give you guys some options. Try things out like this experiment. Of course, you can, if you'd like to, you can, you can come up here. Let's do it on this big tree. You can come up here and actually just just tap on your limbs, but it's better for bigger trees. You know, much better for bigger trees. Then you gotta be really careful. Sometimes when you tap on your limbs, they just look like you tapped them on. They don't look that good. So you gotta be careful that you mix up the strokes and have a nice wide variety. See over here, I'm kind of smushing that. That works really good. As your trees get larger to kind of smush 
There you go. No, all sorts of options. Maybe just a little yellow ochre from time to time to show kind of a, a dry area in the tree. I think it gives it a little more interesting character. Well, now I'm gonna add in some grass, not, not going crazy, but certainly enough to, uh, <laughs> there's my color. Not too sure what it is, but there it is. <laughs> I was saying something about the grass. And anyway, well, here's the grass. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm concentrating. Anyway, this grass here, I think helps to kind of seat the rocks into the painting. It makes them work and makes them just fit a little better, a little more natural. Something like this, I think just, it, it's optional, but, but I think it adds a little to the painting. Of course, as you get bigger, it helps create a little depth. If you go ahead and make those blades of grass a little bigger by crunching, you guys know how to do that. We've done that before just once or twice. <laughs> there, kind of darken up the corners, you know, just soften edges. Anything that you feel like could just use a little, don't, don't go crazy. Don't go crazy with it though, because these rocks are actually pretty decent. I just don't think they require complete covering they would just, uh, you know, kind of lose some of our effort. Yep, there we go. All right, that's that's good on that side. Now over here, I actually, I don't know if you can tell, but I didn't work as hard. I don't know. I don't know if that shows. I, I kind of looking at it, like, I don't know. You know, it was, I did this area a lot quicker. Thinking about probably cover it. So I, I don't even I don't even know if, if that extra time over there really if you can tell or not it'll be interesting. Let me know in the comments. Do you think that side looks better than that side? As far as I'm talking about rocks. All right. Well, either way, won't matter because here it is getting covered. But it's just interesting, kind of an experiment. All right. Well, now we're going to do one of the most important steps here as you finish the painting. Not that we're done, I'm just, you know, as we start to wrap up, is adding the blue, as you can see, it, I actually kind of messed around here, adding another boulder, I kind of like it there. But it really helps to just, I think, add that little extra something to the painting. The, uh, just rounds off objects, gives yourself some reflected light, and I've seen it before in nature. Next time it's a bright blue day, you know, bright sunny day with blue sky, Look at a round object, a tree trunk especially, that's where I saw it. Yeah, I've seen it several times, but just look and you'll see that blue light. Just, I mean, it's not quite as crazy as this, but you'll see that blue light wrap around one of those sides when the lighting is right and it's so pretty. But it really works in a, in a, in a landscape painting though because it just helps to kind of tie things together and cools off some of the warm highlights. I just think it's so important. And especially here in the rocks, in the shadows of the rocks. There you go. Create details in the shadows using the blues. Mm, it's good. It's very good. Just, I think, brings your painting to the next level. Don't skip this step. Yeah, nice. <laughs> you can spend all day. Just don't go crazy with the color. You know, make sure it's not too blue to where it looks funny. And if it does, just just go over it with something like uh, just a dark, whatever, dark green, dark brown, depending on what you're painting. There we go. Hey, one thing we ought to do right over here while I'm thinking about it, we need the lights coming across like this. We need to start getting some detail on this old tree. Might as well start here with the the shadow. Oh, look at that. See how I'm holding it? If you don't do that, you're going to cut right through that paint. But if you hold it so light that you barely touch it, then you'll actually make some pretty cool bark effects without creating the mud. And that's, uh, that's a good thing. One of the last things we're going to do here is add in some liner brush details. This grass will really push, just push everything back kind of make it work in the painting. 
And honestly, here, if you can kind of do some of these dots, sometimes those happen by accident. Do some on purpose every once in a while. They kind of are, they're interesting. They make little leaves or seed pod details. I, I just like it. You can do extra stuff to your rocks or to your, uh, to your trees, which I've already done, the trees right there. It's completely up to you. You can really play around with this and, and go as detailed and as sharp as you like. Maybe just hit a couple more of these rocks with some liner brush action. But You'd be surprised what you could do with a liner brush. Rocks, trees, tree trunks, especially lots of things people don't think to do. And they really make a difference. So give it a try. Thin it down just a little more. That really helps to complete the painting, doesn't it? You can do uh, the highlight ones right over top of this, but you won't need many, will you? At least I don't think today in this painting. Not gonna need I'm going to need a whole lot to finish it up because I'm already, I'm happy with it, you know. If you're already happy with it, just kind of do a few and then leave it because you don't want to overdo and then become unhappy with it. That's not the direction we're trying to go. Uh, but it happens, so no worries even if it does, right? You can always fix it. Yep, that, that's good. You can go ahead and, uh, with that color, if you like, go ahead and add maybe some, some extra just details to these trees in the background, that would be fine too. Not that this is a background tree, this would be a foreground tree, but you know, some broken branches and whatnot. I like that. I think the more detail you add, the better. It's hard to over detail until it starts, you know, it does, it'll look busy after a while, but it's hard to get there. More often than not, we stop too much. Too early, I should too, stop too much. Stop too early is what I was trying to say before getting enough detail. There, I'm getting happy with that level of detail. So we'll stop here real soon. All right, well, we're done with this mountain painting. It's always so much fun to see how those pale colors can really create an amazing amount of depth in a painting. And of course, don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching.